Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Henry Arslin, and welcome to this very special episode of the Future of Money podcast. This is an episode where, with my uh, co-author, Michael Dotsikas, with whom I wrote the book, Decoda Crypto. Uh, we're going to share really the story, like the, some of the background of why we wrote this book, some of the challenges we've had, many of the unexpected challenges that are involved in writing a crypto book uh, for kids. And really, uh, I can't believe we're doing this, but uh, really excited to, for this episode. And uh, Michael, welcome to the Future of Money podcast today. Wow. Excited. Excited to be here. Uh you know, this is this is such an opportunity, Henry, to, to tell the world about what we faced. Uh, it's been a little over three years since we were introduced, and it's just uh, it's been an amazing ride, amazing ride. You know, a lot of our listeners, uh, we have listeners in over 160 countries, and over the, since we know we've done uh, this, we've had this podcast now for many years. But I think the this is going to be a very special episode. I think it's really a conversation you and I have to share with our audience. You know, since this book came out, Michael, I've had literally so many people ask me, like, how is it about writing a crypto book for kids? Is it different? Is it, is it easier? All I can say is that it's way more difficult than we thought to write a crypto book for kids. And I want to, t- I want to share about this, the experience, and why also we did it. But, Michael, before we jump into all this, I think a lot of my listeners know me. They've seen me, follow my content. But it'd be awesome if you can share a bit about more about your background, especially when it comes of your background with regards to kids' book. And then we'll, we'll tie it all together at the end uh, when we talk about how we made the decoding crypto happen. All right. So, so you know, by trade, I'm a uh, IT uh, a technologist. Yeah, I own an IT company, and uh, several several years ago, um, I, I decided to follow a passion, and that passion was was writing for children. And when when people heard about it, going, "You're an IT guy. Why are you writing for kids?" I said, "You know what? Some people when they turn 45, they they they, they play golf. I, I started writing for children, so that's that was the way I did it. So I wrote my first book. Uh, it was well received." Uh, had a fun, fun time doing it. And then I said, you know what? I'm onto something. I really enjoy this. So, you know, waking up every day with stories in my head and uh, it's just something that I love to do. And, uh, you know, that's that's my story as, as an author. I, I've, I've written, I've published four books already, uh, Decoding Crypto, you and I, that's our fifth. And uh, it's it's been amazing. And when we, like I said, Henry, when we were introduced by a mutual friend, I just started getting into the space. Uh, you know, a couple of years before that, learning about crypto, blockchain, all this new emerging technologies that, that people were, were, didn't understand, but they were also afraid of. And then I meet you, who's like, you know, come on, you're the top of the top here, the elite. And, and you're telling me, I want to write a children's book. And I said, I'm in from the very beginning. Uh, I don't know. Remember your experience when, when we first talked? <laughs> yeah. I think we should give a couple. Of, so I think, as you guys know, who's listening to this, really, Michael has been a great, uh, he's a very accomplished uh, kids uh, kids book author, as as you mentioned. And Benjamin Birdie is probably the one my kids uh, read all the time. I even have the the the, the stuffy of Benjamin Birdie at, at home that my uh, uh, my son plays with. But really, I think we have to give it a background. I think how it started. We have a, my, one of my best friends from high school, Mark Holmes, uh, who used to be CEO of Funday and now has moved on to other ventures. Uh, really, uh, you know, I was telling him that, you know, after my last book came out, that, you know, I had a lot of, uh, we're talking, I think, between 50 to 100 people of my followers and people probably listening to this podcast reached out and said, Henry, I love the book. I learned a lot about crypto, but I want something to teach my kids about it. How can I teach my kids? Uh, And the idea was, you know, simmering in my head. And I remember that my daughter one day, um, I heard from her teacher that she would go to school and tell people, my dad works for Bitcoin. And I was like, man, I need to fix this. This doesn't make any sense. And that's how we were connected to Michael. And really, I think from day one, we hit it off. Uh, and and really, uh, you know, uh, as we made the coding crypto happen. Uh, you know, one thing maybe for our listeners, I'd love to hear your view on this, Michael, is I found very difficult. Personally, as somebody has written, uh, you know, numerous other best-selling books for, for crypto, is when I, when I write a book for adult audience, what matters is the content. It needs to be easy to understand, good examples, make it practical and readable. I have to say, it's. I found it. I didn't. I didn't know this, of course, before going into this project with you. But writing a kids book is so much more complicated because you need standards, you need characters. It needs to be fun. It needs to be exciting. Um, is this? How do you think in your out of experience uh, did you find this project? Like, what, what was the most challenging in your from your side on writing this book? Yeah. So, so for me, uh, the way I approach every project, with, with especially writing for children. Is I call it the three E's, the E, the letter E, the three E's test, and and books have to be you know educational. Number one, especially if you're teaching them something. Number two, they have to be engaging. That you you know you have to have reader participation. There has to be some sort of dialogue between if you're reading it with adult or something. And the third thing is you can never underestimate the power of fun. Henry, you've said it before. 
I've said it, and entertaining. So those are the three E's, educational, entertaining, and engaging. And I think we nailed it here. And what I think you and I did from the very beginning, when we had our first few sessions, we were talking about what are we going to write for? Are we going to write for babies? Are we going to write for toddlers? Is it going to be teenagers? So, uh, you know, it, it took several sessions for us to figure this out and say, you know, the sweet spot is the seven to 13 year old. Those, that, those are the kids that are know the what money is about. They know the finance. They are learning about the history. And now what's what, what are these new emerging technologies? What is crypto about? And, and we we wanted to do it. And we did it. We did it in a very simple, easy to follow A to Z method. And I think uh, that worked again. You mentioned it. We, we, we interviewed over dozens and dozens of educators, uh, parents, people in the crypto field to make sure we were teaching this the right way, you know, responsibly. We're not talking about being millionaires. You know, if you're invested in crypto, we're talking about educating on the concepts, the topics that are a little difficult to understand, but doing it in this fun way. Yeah. It's very interesting you mentioned this, Michael, because you're right. Like, I remember like uh, we had numerous brainstorming sessions for those listening. We had uh, sessions, I remember, at Harvard Club in New York and restaurants in Midtown. Uh, we had numerous sessions uh, over the phone as well, over three years. I mean, this is really a, a project we had there. Um, but I think one thing you mentioned is very interesting, and, uh, and I'm holding the book now for those who are watching this or listening to this on YouTube, is, uh, you know, we really wanted to emphasize that this not, we want to uh, educate in the correct way, you know, for example, we have a character called Kryptonair, and actually, he's the guy you don't want to be with. He's the guy with the gold chain, the puffy chest, uh, with driving the Lambo. Like, our goal is that that's not who you want to be. You want to be the educated person who knows about the Web3, who knows about digital assets. And really, this is what uh, empowers you on, on that perspective, right? The other thing I think which is interesting, Michael, is... Um, you know, uh, I've been teaching now crypto in universities for about 10 years, right? And what I find amazing, and the reason I do this is that um, I find it unacceptable that we let students graduate out of universities, not teaching them these skills that they actually, and while they will be the generation that will be the most impacted by it, right? And now I see it even with my kids at home where they ask, you know, they, they, they're curious, of course, about crypto and so on and so forth, that really there's not that many books about digital assets, right? And I think ours is probably, I know we're very biased here, uh, but it's probably one of the first one that is quite comprehensive and uh, written not only from uh, somebody who has experience writing children's book, but also somebody who's, let's say, academically is very focused on the topic as well. Yeah, no, we researched. Uh, at the very beginning, we, we researched to see what was out there. And uh, uh, there was very little. I mean, there was it was sparse and also it wasn't that good. You know, I don't want to you know say that ours is the best book out there, but they weren't that good. And uh, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to stand out from the crowd. And I think both you and I, Henry, are we're very uh, picky on, on the, the product. And that's why it took us three years. Because we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we did it the right way. And uh, what we did, and, and again, this is because of our brainstorming sessions, is we wanted it to stand out. And what, what we added, we added all these interactive elements in the book. You know, all right, the fun characters, cool characters are great. But when you engage the reader with, with jokes, with questions, with, uh, you know, uh, 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 scavenger hunts, that makes it fun. And, and this is what we did. And then we added, I think, the QR code integration is is really big because what QR codes do is it allows the reader to go on a further learning journey and we take them to our, our complimentary website and we give them additional facts on the topics. You know, we can't write everything in one book, so we give them this additional facts. And uh, I think that's important. We added fun facts. We added uh, glossaries, appendices that the educators love. And so, you know, we, we put all these elements in there. Absolutely. It's interesting. You know, the other day I came home and my daughter was reading our book. And uh, it was interesting because, you know, uh, for those of you who ordered the book, uh, you, there's a, there's a, we, we covered the book from A to Z. So, you know, A is altcoin, B is Bitcoin, C is cryptography. And the word, the way we wrote cryptography is actually you have to decipher it, right? And she was doing that. And actually, she was filling out the words. And this is something, Michael, I have to admit, uh, when, we, when you propose that idea, I, I was not convinced. But you're absolutely right. It makes it interactive. Now, I, I, the version that my my daughter has is scribbles everywhere. She wrote on it now and stuff. So it actually works uh, on, on that perspective, you know, which is very interesting. The other thing for our listeners as well is the illustrations, right? So for example, when I do my other crypto books, I always have to hire a team that does designs, but it's mainly graphics, right? It's illustrations that are like, you know, org charts and stuff like that. Here, obviously, we were very lucky uh, to have Billy Martin. Uh, first of all, I think it'd be good if you can explain to our audience who is Billy Martin and the, the, the work that he did uh, in, the, in this book. So, yeah, so originally when we, uh, we had these ideas for all these characters, 
uh, we needed to, to get a proof of concept and see, you know, how they're going to look. So we, we hired, you know, we hired a, an illustrator to create some uh, pictures for us on, uh, you know, on, on, on just a temporary basis. And then when we were ready now to put and, and illustrate every single page and every spread, we needed someone impactful. And I had worked with Billy uh, in the past uh, from, uh, you know, a past project, very little, very little. But Billy, just need to our audience to know, Billy is actually the lead guitarist for the multi-platinum selling, uh, you know, American rock band, uh, Good Charlotte. So not only is he a talented, talented musician, but he's also an incredible illustrator and, uh, you know, character design guy. So I, I reached out to him and lucky for us, he was actually on a uh, project that was starting later on. And he says, you know, I have a few weeks that I can work on this. And he immediately, you know, I think he, he knows the space. And he says, yeah, I'll, I love to work with it. And I remember your face, Henry, when we when Billy was starting to design Henry and we have all these different concepts of Henry. And you're like, mm, wow, this is this is cool. And then you pick the one you wanted. I go, that's it. That's the that's my favorite. And, you know, it's a caricature, but it just nails it. It nails the the characters. And, and Billy, I have to say, what a pleasure to work with. I mean, the, not only is he super talented and super creative. But but we just had such a great time working together, and I can't wait to do more projects with him. So that's and we, which we will. It's funny by the way you mentioned character character because when we started this book, uh, you know, I had just left PwC. I used to I, to, I used to still wear a suit and a tie uh, with my uh, pocket skirt everywhere. Now I'm cutting definitely drop the tie and gradually dropping the the blazers as well. So it's interesting how the character evolved. We should keep the old the first early sketches. I'm sure you have them somewhere. These are pretty cool to see how the characters evolved. It was also interesting, um, Michael. What I, what I found very interesting in this journey, and it was actually unlike writing a normal book, a normal for adult book, for uh, is, is what I mean. How for a kids book you need to have different characters. You need to be storyline. It needs to be superheroes. Here, for example, in this book, there's me, the nerdy professor, and there's my buddy Hodler, who's a cool hip guy. But we also have a female hero called Solidity, you know, named after the Ethereum programming language. Uh, but also we have our you know little buddies and Naka Amoto and other characters like that. It, can you explain maybe how this process works when we're writing kids book? to create these superheroes, to make them engaging and create these little narratives uh, and why that's important in a kid's book. You know, yeah, it's very important to have characters that are relatable. You know, uh, if you're a kid, whatever age, you have to have characters that relate to your age. And I think that's that's the importance of creating Hodler. Hodler was something that we sparked our, you know, during our conversations. And there, it, he's a very cool, relatable character. Henry, this you know, professor, nerdy kind guy, that's great. But we also wanted to make sure that we didn't leave out any demographic. And we wanted to make sure that young girls were also in the space. And they also want to be involved in this and learn. And that's why Solidity was, actually, Solidity is the, is the genius. She's the super genius. She's the planet's greatest you know, programmer, coder. And she's also Hodler's best friend. So you know, she's this confident, young, teenage uh, you know, girl that can do anything. And that's what we want these, this book to show that, you know, girls as well as can do anything. And I think that's important. But what I love is the way we created some of these characters and we named them. And I remember one day we were talking about the two phones. So Hodler and, and Henry have phones, they're, they're smartphones. And I was telling you, Henry, I like some names, Abacus, uh, you know, all these ancient Greek names and all this. And all of a sudden you went, how about Naka and Moto? And I went, whoa, I go, perfect. And, and we nailed it. So it was, this is how we worked. I mean, we really, uh, you know, we put our egos aside and we said, we're going to create it together. And you know what? I'm, honestly, we fed off our skills. You know, I'm, I'm a children's author. I write, I love writing in rhyme. I love taking stanzas, but I couldn't do that without someone explaining it to me in layman's terms. And that's what you did. You took every single word, you worked hard and you gave me examples. And one, one example that stands out is a utility token. Uh, we were talking about how do we explain utility token? It's going to be difficult. And you said, you know what? Think of it as buying advanced tickets, you know, to something, you know, and like a roller coaster park. And and that was it. And that's I think that's one of our fun spreads there that they're in a roller coaster and they're having fun. And but that's a, that's what we did. You know, we tried to explain these terms in in an easy to follow format. And uh, I think and, and we fed off our strengths. And uh, yeah, that's why exactly. it worked. You know, it's funny. I'm looking at the book right now as we speak, right? And uh, uh, a part of the characters, I remember when we even had to, we decided to come up with the names of these uh, things. You know, actually, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it now, right now. Even when we had uh, uh, like Nakamoto, I remember we were discussing with one of our sponsors we're going to talk about in a second, uh, the very, we said, you know, Nakamoto, it's actually like Nokia Motorola as well. It was completely, we didn't yeah. think about that at the time. Yeah, we exactly. One thing we have to also um, really uh 
give credit to is the sponsors we had in this book, right? Because obviously it was a big journey of love when we launched the book. Maybe people don't know, realize this, but actually writing kids book costs a lot of money. Uh, you know, hiring the, you have to have the graphics done. The design. I mean, we spent, uh, I think we can probably disclose, we spent over a hundred thousand dollars in creating this whole book. And, uh, you know, then there comes obviously there's PR on top of it. You need to carry the graphics, the social media. Uh, and I think we're very lucky to have really uh, two great firms that really stood up to come and help us out when we told them that like, we have this project in mind. Uh, big hats off really to First Digital, uh, Vincent Chalk, their CEO, uh, really came up and really said, guys, we want to, we want to, uh, support the Vir, Smear team from a team as well in Hong Kong have been a fantastic uh, partners uh, for us as well. And also Ledger, I think we have to say as well, Ledger, who's our technology partner in this book, uh, Pascal Gauthier, uh, you know, uh, CEO of, of, of Ledger, uh, Ariel on their marketing side really have been great the partners of us as well. Really, and uh, I think from it was really touching, you know, when we put all this years and effort and money to build this book and people from the community came and said, you know what? You guys are doing something good and we want to support it. I think that was very, very touching uh, uh, as well. Yeah, and I, I love the, the testimonials we got too, Henry. I oh, mean, yeah. you, sent, you sent the book out, you know, pre-press pre, uh, pre uh, for, for some of these, you know, incredible, uh, you know, C-level executives and everybody just, you know, gave us the most incredible testimonials. And, and we're so proud of the, you know, the, the work I think that, that we have out here. And uh, what's exciting is that there's going to be more if you want to get into that. Yeah, well, I think that's maybe it's good. We can, uh, first of all, I think this book has been tremendous success. Really, thank you very much for, I mean, our book was a number one new release uh, in its category when it got released. We're very, very grateful to all of you. Uh, the book made it to a top five best selling list as well in its category. So, extremely touched and honored. This is really as an author, there's, I think, two moments that are very special. One is when you, for the first time, you see your book in that box that you get. And second time is really when you get the, 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 the reception from the, the, the you know, your, the audience was actually people buying it. It's really touching on, on that side. And yeah, I mean, we have, we're working on another book. I think there's been a very good feedback, you know, and as we're making this book, uh, obviously we, we did an A to Z, right? So there's a lot of words and some words, some letters have a lot of crypto words. Uh, and we're thinking about different concepts that we can come up with a second book. Maybe we should open up also to our, some of our listeners if you have any suggestions on how you want to cover. But I don't know, Michael, if you want to share what we have in mind we're not revealing too much as a potential second book for kids based on the feedback that we received in the last couple of months as well. I, well, uh, again, following the, uh, the A to Z format uh, you know, works really well. And that's the feedback we've been getting. So there are so many other terms that we haven't been able to cover. And when we start, started writing this book, actually, we had almost double the amount of terms, but we just couldn't fit them on the pages. So, yeah, our second book in the series is going gonna, is gonna to cover more topics. And then we're going to get into more in depth, you know, of Bitcoin, you know, maybe Ethereum, you know, what are NFTs? What is this uh, crazy new world of metaverses out there? So we're going to start getting delving deeper, deeper into that. And uh, and one exciting uh, thing that we are, you know, really looking into is, uh, is maybe creating a TV show out of this. So, you know, this is something that, that actually we've been approached, you know, from others telling us that this is what they see uh, for these yeah. These characters, so that's you know that's on the horizon. Uh, we're excited to see what the opportunities uh, that are, that come from this. You know the the uh, super interesting. So let's I think with the TV series, we can see how it goes, and also for adults as well. Huh? It's been interesting when I when I got the book. Uh, we we had one of the feedback we were getting a lot is. Ad parents were like, "Hey, can you also add a glossary at the back?" So now in the book we have a glossary, so people know what every uh, word means. And there's also fun facts as well. So parents can talk about it with their kids and make it there. I think that's part of a TV series as well because we're the fun characters now. Uh, there's a lot to be, we can work with. One thing as well, I think, I don't know if um, those who are listening to actually order a copy of the book. By the way, if you're interested in ordering a copy of the book, we'll put it in the show notes, but you can go on Amazon, uh, uh, or, you know, called buy, Decoding Crypto. You can type our name and the book will pop up. Uh, but um, we also put some hidden uh, Easter eggs as well. Uh, I, let, I let people to Discover those, and uh, but we uh, throughout the book you could see little Easter eggs are hidden out there uh, that have references to uh, Michael and I, our backgrounds and stuff like that. That was very very cool uh, on that side. One thing, Michael, I just want to highlight as well was some of the challenges, right? I mean, you know, when I look at the book here, one of my favorite ones personally is a zk proof, zero knowledge proof. Uh, I'll show it here for those uh, watching this on YouTube, where basically, like, how do you explain zero knowledge proof, which is the fact that you can know something without seeing it. And for me, this is my probably the, my, my favorite uh, part of a spread where you, uh, Hodler sees me, Henry, basically with a big, big, big belly. And he's like, oh, okay, so I know that Henry has eaten without having seen him eat because he sees my big belly and me lying down in a, in a, in a food coma. So, so many interesting things. And these really took a lot of time to put together. 
uh, to really come up with it and really, you know, it's incredible. Explaining something is one thing. Explaining it in very simple terms is extremely diff- difficult. As Einstein said, uh, Albert Einstein said, if you're not able to explain it easy ways, you don't understand the topic well enough, right? Uh, that was, I think, one of the tough parts, right, Michael? That was that was the, the biggest challenge, actually. But like I said, Henry, we worked on on each other's strengths. That's one of your strengths. I mean, you're an educator. You're a professor. You you do this on on a regular basis. So uh, you know that that really helped me. You know, come up with some of these standards and some of the rhymes and all that. But th- and they were fun. I mean, to to provide those uh, you know analogies were were really fun. The other challenge for us also was. You know, it took us, it took us, like I said, three years to do this, but, you know, crypto has been up and down, you know, in the view of, of many, you know, it's, oh, is it a fad? Is it real? Is it, and, and this is the, uh, the challenges we're facing, especially here in the, in the States. Uh, but you know what? Uh, you, everywhere I go and everybody, everybody that's seeing this book and they're reading it and they're picking it up, they're understanding, wow, you know what? It isn't as difficult as I think it is. So maybe I should learn it. But more importantly, they're saying, I don't want to leave my kids behind. They better learn it. So, so they're they're seeing that this is going to be impactful. It's impactful right now. It's not future, you know, but it's it's impactful now. Super interesting. Absolutely, I think it's uh, it's something that has actually has been. Uh, I think especially as parents, people always parents want their kids to have the the, the ammunitions as they go into the real world, right? And I mean, and, and crypto is. I think it's it's going to be essential on, on that perspective, right? Um, you know, and I think the other I mean, one final comment on this as well was really, I think. Well, I think it was the right decision. We're wondering at the beginning of the book, do we just jump in and give the A to Z of crypto, you know? But we actually spend quite a few spreads on the book uh, on the history of money, the origin of commerce, how we started with barter, uh, how then the evolution of money, how we went from salt and cattle to basically money, digital money, to where we are with digital uh, assets, basically, right? So I found that that'd be very, very important. And it's been interesting when I speak to parents now, since the book has come out, uh, that's often one piece of feedback I'm getting a lot is, wow, like that part has been very, very instrumental. Yeah, same here. That's that's one of the pieces of feedback. They love the fact that we're teaching, you know, how it all evolved, you know, the evolution of money from way back when to to now. Yeah, exactly. That, that's great feedback. And, uh, you know, that's important. That's an important aspect, I think, of this book. Yeah. So, Michael, any closing words uh, to our audience uh, on the book or uh, like, let's say, your, what was your most memorable experience in this uh, as we're getting this done? Wow. You know what? Uh, I, I think I think our, our sessions were memorable because, like yeah. I said, we, we just work so well together. But also the illustration process, you know, seeing yeah. Billy illustrate, you know, every spread. It was like almost opening up a, a Christmas present every other day, you know, so uh, that, was, that was very special. But. Uh, more importantly, Henry, is the feedback and, and the testimonials that we receive. So, you know, we're, I'm very proud of this book. I can't wait to see where it takes us, you know, with, uh, with the next books, because we need, to, we need to educate. We need to educate the next generation on, on the yeah. future of money. Uh, it's yeah. so important, so important for, for, for you know, for you, everyone. You know, uh, personally, the moment I will never forget for this, you know, obviously we had numerous first calls and meetings, but there was one night here, it was December uh, it was like I think one or two years ago. Everybody was home. Everybody was home partying. You know, it was call day. People were going back home, and I remember it was a late call. It was like I was nine or ten p.m. I was still at, at a roaming desk at a time in DIFC here in, in Dubai, and we were we were going around the stanzas. I mean, for people by the book, you know, the difference with the kids book. Every section has to rhyme. You need the right words, and it was like ten p.m. I was alone in this place on the phone with you, and we're going you know for two hours talking on you know on the specific paragraph. And I, at the time, I realized, I'm like, are we crazy here? Like, why? Like, we could be out in restaurants and having fun. Instead, we're here working on these books. And I guess it's an extra hustle. I always say it's the extra 10% of work that gives you the outsized returns afterwards in life. Uh, but I know there's one moment I will never forget. We were in this diner in Midtown. This was maybe a couple of months ago, where we finally had the spreads of the book. The book was getting there. I remember I was eating uh, Egg Benedict for uh, as a breakfast. We were doing a little brunch. Uh, and for the first time, I think we saw the spreads of the book. We had, were doing the minor edits. Uh, and that's why I knew, wow, this is this is real. You know, this is really uh, coming into place. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a really real journey. Uh, and I think we should, I just want to give thanks as well, of course, to Billy Martin, who illustrated the book, but also to Anthony Dotsikas, your son, who really helped on the lettering and graphics, uh, Nelly, Nelly Migordician, who helped on the graphics, and Janelle McLaughlin, who helped as a, as a contributing editor. I think we should give them a lot of credit uh, for really all the help uh, that came out on, on that perspective on making this, uh, this dream uh, happen. Absolutely. It takes a team. It really takes a team to, uh, to, to produce 
uh, something like this. So it's uh, of course yeah. and our to our sponsors, Ledger on technology partner, uh, and of course uh, first first digital as our education partner. Michael, I have to say it's been a truly pleasure uh, working with this. Uh, working with you on this book, I uh, hope I really hope the listeners at home, uh, this this book becomes useful. It's a, hopefully it's a good contribution uh, to the digital assets world and to uh, all of us. I know everybody listening is doing his his or her part in uh, building the future of finance, in building the future of money, and hopefully uh, decoding crypto with Henry Holler is another uh, you know brick in this gradual uh, wall that we're built. Wall, I'd say mountain, and you know uh, bridge that we're building. Uh, towards the future, guys. So thank you very much, everybody. Really, uh, Michael, it's been a pleasure working on this book. Uh, we won't have this session. Really share maybe with the audience some of the backstory behind this book as well. Uh, but really, if you're interested, you have kids, you have nieces, nephews, and you know you, you want them to learn about the future of money, uh, decoding crypto with Henry and Hodler hopefully could be of, could, hopefully could be of interest uh, on that person. And if you buy it, one little favor, please leave a review on Goodreads or Amazon. It really makes a massive impact and difference for us uh, authors on that perspective. Yeah. Thank you, Henry. Thank you for having me on. This is this has been uh, great. Okay, so Michael, there's a tradition at the show at the Future of Money is uh, whoever comes out on the show, they have to go through my fire round of round of questions, uh, basically quick questions, one or two word answers. Uh, and as you know, we've never done this, but I wanna I wanna go through it basically on your side as my co-author in this book uh, to go to and, our, and, our, and my best friend the Bell he is here is here to keep us honest. Hope you're ready. I'm ready. Awesome. What's the one thing you find the most amazing in the crypto space? Metaverse. All right, here we go. Uh, if there is, who is, in your opinion, the best kids book author you've seen or you read, uh, you think has great contributed greatly overall? Oh my God, Dr. Seuss. Dr. <laughs> oh, of course, my kids read that as well. Um, in uh, Henry and Hodler, why, who's your favorite character? You know, I have to say, Hodler's my favorite, but I'm, I'm leaning towards Henry, my man, because of my work with you. <laughs> uh, from all the uh, kid series, book series that have been translated into movies and videos afterwards, what is one you think has done a particularly good job? Inspector Gadget, maybe. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, of course, yeah. You're right. And by the way, Inspector Gadget, uh, Jean Chalapin, uh is actually the, the writer producer of a TV series, inspect, including Inspector Gadget, The Mysterious Cities of Gold, Ulysses 31, and The Real Ghostbusters. Actually, he gave an endorsement of this, of this book as well, which is very awesome on that perspective. Um, another one. Uh, you, you have a Greek background. What's your favorite thing about Greece? Oh, my God. The islands, the sun, the <laughs> everything about Greece is, is just beautiful. You live now in uh, New York. What's your what's your favorite thing about New York? Uh, New York, the favorite thing. I love the weather, the change of seasons, uh, and you know what? Where we're at, we have a really nice, small, tight knit community uh, out in Long Island. So I love it. Here, here we go. Uh, if you could go back in history, any period of history, which period would you want to go back and live in? You know what? I, I, I look forward. I want to go to the future. I want to see what's going to happen to, to all of us. I'm, I'm just excited about the future. And that's why we <laughs> need to educate our next financial superstars. That's how I see it. Uh, Harry Potter. I mean, what's your view? You think it's, uh, it, it deserves the success it had or it's exaggerated? Absolutely deserves every success it had. I mean, she's brilliant. Uh, you, yeah. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Fantastic. And, and Michael, last question, uh, my classical question, whoever comes on the Future of Money podcast, if you could have lunch or dinner with one person dead or alive, lunch or dinner with one person dead or alive, who would it be? Wow. Um, Albert Einstein. Really? Why is that? He is just, I, I mean, I still, I still have trouble understanding some of his uh, you know, theories, and I want him to explain them to me like we're explaining crypto to the rest of the world. <laughs> I uh, love it. Fantastic <laughs> way to end it. Michael Dozica is my co-author in the book, Decoding Crypto. For everyone interested, you want to buy this, it's on Amazon. You can get it, Decoding Crypto. You can search with our names. Uh, and Michael, it's been a pleasure working on this book with you. And thank you very much, everybody who's listening on the episode. Hope you find it interesting. And uh, thank you for all your support over the years in uh, making uh, not only this book possible, but also uh, across the content that we've been producing since 2016. Thank you very much, everybody. And Michael, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Great. See you guys Great. soon. And thank you very much, everybody. See you guys soon next week for another episode of the Future Money Podcast.